بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on in our study of شرح السنة للإمام المزني رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة we reached the very important part of the text which all of the text of course is important which illustrates the moqif or the position of the Salaf al-Salih Ridwanullahi alayhim uh, regarding the Qur'an and regarding the Qur'an as the Kalam Allah, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Imam al-Mazni rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'a <clears throat> he said al-Qur'an Kalam Allah Azza wa Jal. Woman Ladunhu Walaysa bi Makhlukin Fayubid. Imam al Mazni Rahmatul Ali Rahmatin Wasiya, he said, The Quran is the speech of Allah. It emanated from him and it is not created so it will not perish. So this is glad tidings for the mu'mineen. And this is why this is from the usul al-i'tiqad, the foundation of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Because this is a belief that was held by the Salaf al-Salih and which is built upon the adillah the evidences from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and codified in the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and was compiled and understood as a principle of creed by the salaf of this ummah. So Imam Muslim, he said, and the Quran is the speech of Allah. The Qur'an, Kalam Allah. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. It came from him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and it is not created, and it will not perish. Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatin wasi'ah, he mentioned, he said, Wal Qur'an Kalam Allah, minhu bada, wa ilayhi yu'ud. Have he aqeedah ahl sunnati wal jama'ah? يَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّهُ مَحْفُوظٌ مِنْ تَحْرِيفٍ وَنَقْصٍ وَزِيَادَةٍ وَأَنَّهُ سَيَبْقَى So Imam Ahmed, he mentioned here, he said the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. So we're going to see now, what are the implications of this? What does that mean? It sounds very strange for us, 1400 years later, talking about this mas'ala. It's not something that we reflect on very much, or we hold this principle, the Muslims in general hold this principle to be true, that it's the speech of Allah, that it's divine speech. But you can see the implications that if one were to hold the belief of the Jahmiyyah or some of these other early sects that deviated with regards to this point of creed, that how it leads to kufr, how it leads to disbelief, and it's a door that's opened the door of philosophy. It is the door that Ahl Kalam opened and then they're unable to close it because it has so many reprehensible implications by holding that that the Quran is not the speech of Allah or that it is uh, tampered with as some of the Shia reject they reject that it's it's the uh, perfect uh, perfect divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of the other sects so you see the danger when you negate that this is the speech of Allah and when you say that it's created, we're going to talk about those implications in detail as we deal with this mas'ala, uh, this very important issue. So he said, the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. From him it began, and to him it shall return. He said, this is the creed of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. They believe that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, and that it is, it has been memorized and protected. 
from what? From tahrif, from being uh, uh, being distorted and being uh, being tampered with. Okay, as we say with the the books of the 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 Christians and the Jews. <clears throat> And that it is protected from someone adding to it or someone taking from it, meaning uh, cutting out verses, as some of those groups of uh, Ahlul Kufr wa Zandaka believe. And then he said, And it will remain. It will remain so. So then he says, فَإِذَا فَسَدَ النَّاسِ فِي آخر زمان وَأَقْتَرَبَتَ السَّاعَةِ هِنَذٍ يُسْرَ عَلَيْهِ فَيُسَلِّبْ مِنَ الْمَصَاحِفِ وَمِنْ صُدُورَ الرِّجَالِ وَذَلِكَ كُبَيْلْ قِيَامَ السَّاعَةِ <coughs> Imam Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullah he said, you know, it will remain this, meaning the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it has been protected. And when the people become spoiled or when the people become wicked and evil, in the when it comes closer to Yom Al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment, and the sigh the sa is coming closer, the hour will be established, the hour is, is close to being established then at this time it will be removed from the hearts of men. Many of the people will be ignorant. Ignorance will be widespread. And there's many, several ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, which illustrate this point, that in the end of time, there will, the, the ignorance will be widespread. People won't even know the meaning of la ilaha illallah. They will just say, we know, the only thing we know is that our fathers used to say, say this, this kalimah. They won't even know anything about Allah Azza wa Jal. So that shows us that knowledge, as the Prophet wasallam mentioned, and from the master of that knowledge, the, the, the origin of that knowledge is the Qur'an that will be removed from the hearts of men. It will be removed from the hearts of men, meaning ignorance will become widespread. And we see some of those signs... In the Ummah today, that ignorance becomes widespread, although knowledge is readily available. The access to knowledge is there. But still, people are more concerned with entertainment. And still, people are more concerned with other worldly matters than to do any significant talab al ilm or even minuscule talab al ilm how many people make hajr of the Qur'an? Wallahu musta'an. How many people make hajr of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How many people make hajr from ilm mumin, from knowledge in general? But all they do, they go to work, they come home, they watch TV, they busy themselves with issues of the dunya without reserving any time. I'm talking about the most extreme cases. So what do you think? that What is their children getting as tarbiyah? And what is the future then? It just, knowledge begins to be taken from the hearts of the people. Then the people don't refer to scholars any longer. And they will take from the juhal. As the Prophet wasallam said in some of those ahadith, and maybe when we get a chance, we will go over some of those ahadith, which illustrate this very important point. So these are signs of the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah drawing near. It came in a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. <clears throat> the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, وَيُسْرَ عَلَى الْكِتَابِ عَلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي لَيْلَةً فَلَا يَبْقَى فِي الْعَرْضِ مِنْهُ آيَةً So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in a hadith akhrajuhu Ibn Majah min hadith uh, Hudayfa uh, and Imam al-Albani said it, declared it a sound uh, hadith in which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the Qur'an will be removed in a night and there will not remain on the earth an ayah. So this shows us, Ahabat the importance of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and that as Imam Ahmed al-Najmi mentioned 
that it will be removed and that this is a sign that the hour is near. Imam Tahawi mentioned about this in his text, his famous text, the uh, Aqidat Tahawiyah, which is the uh, creed of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, and that Imam Abu Hanifa, and that even the Ahnaf, the Hanafi scholars of Ahl Sunnah, that they hold this to believe to be uh, so, to be this that these points of creed are agreed upon upon Ahl Sunnah, regardless of what madhab and fiqh, what madhab and fiqh in those masail uh, far'iya or those furur, those uh, masail which have to deal with uh, mu'amalat, how we deal with one another, or the fiqh of ibadat, uh, uh, the fiqh of worship. Imam at tahawi he mentioned, he said, the Quran is the word of Allah. It originated from him without us being able to figure out the how of it, meaning the kafia. A speech he sent it down upon his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a revelation. The believers declared true his avowal and felt assured that it was Allah's word and truth and not created words in the fashion of the words of created beings. Therefore, whoever heard Therefore, whoever heard it and it alleged that they are man's words disbelieved. Allah has censored him, denounced him, and has promised him hellfire. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, I shall fling him into sakr, meaning the hellfire. When he promised hellfire to the one who decried, this is nothing but the speech of a man. We know and felt assured that this is the speech of the creator of mankind and that the speech of mankind cannot resemble it. So here Imam Tahawi, Rahmatullah Rahmatin Wasiya, <clears throat> is showing that this is the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that the Quran is the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is uncreated and it is from him to Barak wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised hellfire for the one who claims otherwise, that this is something grievous to ascribe it to a man as the pagans did in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying that this is uh, al-bashar, that this is a statement of, of, of a man. Okay, that, that how many claims against the Quran did they make or that this is Muhammad's speech? This is just mere poetry. Hadaqul al-sha'in. This is just a, a statement of a shahid, of, of a poet. How many claims? But no, this is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it began with him because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, meaning it's a characteristic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kalam. It is from his characteristic. This is the difference between Ahl Sunnah wa Ahl Bid'ah in this masala. So this is an important principle of the religion of Islam and, and issue over which many sects of Islam lost their way. Nevertheless, this is the truth, which anyone would conclude if he gave a serious thought to the subject with the evidence of the Quran and the Sunnah in his mind, applying plain logic and a straightforward thinking not affected by doubts, skepticism, and fanciful thoughts. Meaning that all of those things, the speculation of Ahl Bid'ah from the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and other groups who let philosophy, who let external beliefs enter into their aqidah and conjecture, debating, debating against the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of accepting. Ahl sunnah accepts the book in the sunnah and believes in the book of the sunnah. They don't Without tahwil, without tahrif, you know, not not changing the meaning, not uh, changing the actual text, without distorting it, and without negating it. This is the and, and without making resemblance, especially when it comes to sifat, the sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the divine uh, characteristics and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, 
and Kalam is from that. And we're going to get to some of the Adilla from the Book of Allah with reg uh, in regards to this. So as we said, that this is the Itikad of the Mu'tazila, that they came up with this, this belief that the Qur'an uh, was created and that it's not from his Sifat. Some of the evidences from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing that the Qur'an is uncreated and it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَكَلِّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَقْلِيمَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, and Allah has spoken to Musa, to Moses alayhi salatu wa salam, taklima. He's spoken to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qala ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem, wa lamma ja Musa li miqatina wa kallamuhu rabbuhu. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem, and when uh, Musa came to the appointed place and the appointed time, <clears throat> his Lord spoke to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa. Allah In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have al -Kareem. And these are the messengers. We, uh, we favored some of them over others. From them are those who Allah spoke to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have al -Kareem. Qala ya Musa, inni astafaynak astafaytuka ala nasi ala nasi bi risalati wa bi kalami Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-a'raf say ya Musa o oh Musa verily we uh verily I have uh chosen you over the people with my message and with my speech. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of these are ithbat to kalam Allah. These, all these ayat are evidences to show us that the Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qala ta'ala, wa ma kana li basharin an yukallim Allah, an yukallimahu Allah, illa wahyun, illa wahyun, o min wara al hijab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we kitab al kareem in surah al shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it was not befitting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would speak to a Bashar unless it was as revelation and from behind a barrier or hijab. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَنْ أَسْدَقُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا In Surah Al-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whose Speech is more truthful than Allah's, meaning Allah has speech. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَنْ أَسْدَقُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, verse 122, and who, whose speech is more truthful than Allah قِيلَ in, in, in statement. There's, this is what it's back to Kalam Allah. This is an affirmation that the Qur'an is the divine, perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it was uncreated and it's from his divine sifat. It's from his characteristics, tabarak wa ta'ala. Wa qala ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem With qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And when your Lord spoke to the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَ Verily, I'm going to establish in the earth a khalifa. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the malaika. He spoke to the angels. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And who was that khalifa he established in the earth? Was Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Mankind. 
and Bani Adam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and that's just some of the adilla from the Quran, and just, we'll give you one text from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, qala, wa an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'anu wa nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, idha habba, uh, idha habba allahu abdin, nana jibreel, inna allaha yuhibbu falanin, fa ahabbuhu, فَيَحَبُّهُ جِبْرِيلُ فَيُنَادِي جِبْرِيلُ فِي أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فَلَانًا فَأَحَبُّوهُ فَيُحِبُّهُ أَهْلُ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ يُدْعَوْا لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ الْحَدِيثَ الْحَدِيثَ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ إِنَّ الْحَدِيثَ إِذَا حَدِيث that is collected in uh, this is in Bukhari the hadith in Bukhari Sahih al-Bukhari the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he said that the, uh, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if Allah loves a servant he calls Jibreel Meaning, this is ithbat al kalam. This is showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Yunadi Jibreel. Onada Jibreel. He calls Jibreel. Onada Jibreel. Uh, yeah, Nada Jibreel. That he calls Jibreel. In the law, you hibbu falan. Verily, Allah loves so and so. So love him. So then Jibreel loves him. And he calls and he says. فَيُنَادِي جِبْرِيلُ فِي أَحْلَ سَمَاءِ Then Jibreel, alayhi salatu wa salam, he calls the, 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 the inhabitants of Jannah. He says, Verily that Allah loves so-and-so, so love him. So then the people of paradise, they love this person. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this person acceptance from the people of the dunya, the Ahla Ard. So this Ahabati Billah, aside from all the fawaid we get from this hadith, and showing us the importance of being of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, the point of mentioning this text from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, speech. And this is the minhaj of the salaf as salih This is the madhab of the salaf. And from those groups, as we mentioned, we said the Jahmiyyah, one of the groups that rejects this is the Jahmiyyah. And they say, Laysa kalam min sifatillah. So first they deny all of those ayats, all of those nasus we just gave, they said, kalam, speech, is not from the characteristics of the law. Maybe they believe that it's unbefitting that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala would speak. Although we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kalam Allahu Musa. That Allah spoke to Musa. And all of those ayat that we just mentioned. So they say that's unbefitting. So they say, laysa kalam min sifatillah. Wa innamu, wa innamu, Huwa khalqum min min makhluqatillah. But rather, it is a creation from amongst the creations of Allah. That Allah created it from the air, from hawa. Or from a, a place. And then, you know, then it is heard. Uh, then it is heard from that place. And they mention, they say, وَإِدَافَتِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ إِدَافَةً خَلْقُ أَوْ تَشْرِيفِ مِثْلُ نَاقُطُ اللَّهِ وَبَيْتُ اللَّهِ So this is very important uh, for us to understand this so that we can understand how did the Jahmiyyah, how did they, they think? What was, what was their uh, Aqidah based upon? How, how did they have this conjecture? 
have this speculation, infer and look into the speech of Allah to then negate it and at the same time philosophize and come up with new theories. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu bid'atin dalala. All bid'ah is misguidance. But this is bid'ah mukaffara, bid'ah which takes you out of the fold of Islam when you, uh, this important uh, aspect of creed, as the Salaf used to make takfir of uh, the Jahmiyyah in general. This was the hukum that the Salaf used to make takfir of them for this, for this mas'ala alone. So the Jahmiyyah, then they say, you know, so they say that the Quran, the, the speech of Allah or the, the speech of Allah and speech was created in the air or was created in a place. And then it is heard from. Then, then you listen to the speech. See, see how the philosophy you have to, it's a silsila. You know, it's just speculation. Speculation after speculation, after inference, after infer inference, after then to hypothesize. But you can't really make a hypothesize from something like this. You can't really test that. But instead, it's from your belief. It's from your speculation. It's from your opinions. It's from your desires. And you see the difference between Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah just takes the Nasus and accepts it. They believe. They, they, they affirm what Allah affirms about himself and negate what Allah negates about himself. They affirm what the Prophet Sallallahu says about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they negate what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam negates about Allah Azza wa Jal. So they say that the kalam, it's created in a place or it's created in the air and then it's heard from. All of this, we don't know where they came with this. وَإِذَافَتِهِ اللَّهِ إِذَافَتِنْ خَلْقِ Oh, Tashrif. So they said, and the fact that you make this a, if you want to say a compound noun, or you you combine this and you say, for example, Kalam Allah, okay? Kalam Allah, that this is, instead of saying this is a sifat, al Sunnah says, this is a characteristic of Allah, this is an attribute of Allah, that he speaks. They say no. That this by, they're not negating the left. They're not negating the actual statement, Kalam Allah. They're not saying, no, that's not in the Quran. No, they say that that's in the Quran. But they say that this is similar to saying Bayt Allah, the house of Allah. We don't say, when we talk about the Haram in Mecca, Bayt Allah al Haram, that this is the, the, the house of Allah, the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives in the Haram. That's not what that means. But this is idafata tashrif. This is giving the, this is by saying that Allah, that this is Allah's house, it is giving honor to that created thing, which is the haram. Haram Mekki, the bait of Allah. So they're saying this is similar by saying kalam Allah, that this is similar to that. Or it's similar to saying, as in uh, Allah mentions in the Quran, Naqatullah, the, uh, the, uh, the camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, uh, uh, this is also tashrif. Doesn't mean Allah is, you know, we, we don't speculate, wa'iyadun billah, but it has no other meaning than that this creature that's created has tashrif, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it as naqatullah. That it is, so it gives that, that creation honor. So they say that this is idhafata tashrif. They in turn say likewise with kalam Allah, that this is idhafata, that kalam is not really Allah's attribute, but rather we associate it because Allah says, and so they're saying that it is created and that this is uh, this is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a, or attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way of giving honor to speech. Ahl Sunnah says, La, where did you get this from? Ahl Sunnah says, La, all of those ayat, they show us very clearly that speech is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's one of his attributes. And all of his attributes, his divine attributes, this is the crux of the argument of the Salaf are uncreated. This is a part of him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. This is his sifat. These are his attributes that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaks in a manner that suits his majesty whenever he, he, he chooses to speak and to whomever he chooses to speak. 
and we look at the adilla and we accept that adilla. We accept those evidences from the book and the sunnah. They say la, they say no, as we mentioned. And then the Asha'ira, they also have a, another argument, but I don't think it's necessary because we kind of prolonged it to necessarily go into all the arguments of all the people of desires who deviated and made deviated in this in this bab in this in this uh, regard to this mess of this issue this is a very important issue, but instead it should suffice us to go with that evidence, the adilla that we mentioned, and to have this understanding of the salaf salih that this is the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it was uncreated. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam used to make the dua and ordered us to make this dua before entering our homes. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tammat min sharri ma khalaq. I seek refuge I seek refuge in the perfect speech of Allah from that which he, uh, from the evil of which he has created. So from this dua of the Prophet wasallam, we see the affirmation of what? Of the speech of Allah and seeking refuge in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you only seek refuge in what? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his divine attributes because those divine attributes are Sifat of Allah, their characteristics and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not permissible to seek refuge in the creation, to say, A'udhu bi min kitab, you know, I seek refuge in, uh, I seek refuge in the book from uh, evil, or I seek refuge in the jinn as the people before went astray in their kufr, in their shirk, because this is shirk. Because seeking refuge is a type of ibadah. When you are seeking refuge, and it is ubudiyah, seeking refuge in, in, in something to the extent that it has reached the level of ibadah, that no one can help you except the law. For example, you can, seek, you can ask for help from someone. For example, if I need someone to bring me a pencil, for example, I don't have a pencil. Can you please... Uh, bring me a pencil, I could say to that person who is a person who has the ability to do so. And this is a person who's present. I can't say that to someone who's not present or to the dead or to seek protection from them. But you can seek when, when someone is unable and they're unable to hear and they're unable to fulfill that at all. There's no way possible. Then this is only this type of refuge is only sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not from something created. So I hope that's clear in the argument. When we say, A'udhu bi kalimati lahi tammat, this is, we are seeking refuge in the divine attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the perfect speech of Allah al-Kalam, from the evil that he's created. So it lets us know that also, that the Kalam of Allah is uncreated. Otherwise, it wouldn't be permissible to uh, seek refuge in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A last point I want to mention, as there is so much that can be said about this, and there's so much evidence from the book and the sunnah and the aqwal of the salaf, salaf of this ummah, that the salaf were united, had the ijma on takfir of the one who said that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was created that the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was created. So it's a very serious mas'ala, and it still has an effect on individuals in this contemporary time. We think of this as an ancient mas'ala, but it is ancient, but at the same time, there are still those who are affected by this. And I want to end with this last statement of the Salaf. The Salaf used to say, and this is because we, we see some of our brothers who may have not been blessed to study say statements which are incorrect and could resemble the people of Jehamiyyah, the, the, the uh, Jehamib and Safwan and, and other Mubtadi'ah that the Salaf uh, refuted and made takfir of and that are very dangerous aqwal, very dangerous statements. And this statement of the Salaf is, Al-Kalam, Kalam al-Bari, will salt 
Sota al-Qari. The speech is the speech of al-Bari, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about the Quran, it's the speech of Allah. It's the divine, uncreated speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is his speech. It's one of his attributes. Well, salt, salt al-Qari, uh, al-Qari, that the sound that you listen, when you listen to someone recite the Quran, that sound is the sound of someone created. But it doesn't change the fact that he is reciting the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's better for those people who haven't studied this mas'ala, not to get into argument and debate about this, not to go into and start saying, well, this mushaf that we have, it's this, and the, the ink is created, and this and that. Close the door to the shaitan, and close the door to bid'ah, and close the door to kufr. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, Rasulullah and anything I said that was incorrect, was for myself and the shaitan, and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyiba wa amal al And until the next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.